Considering Lloydminster's border city status, the outcome of this dispute between Alberta and Saskatchewan has the attention of Lloydminster construction members. Josh Ryan has the local reaction to this story. Construction companies do business on both sides of the border in Lloydminster. However, the ban on Alberta plates for Saskatchewan road projects could change that. A lot of our members are small business, so um, you don't have the resources and, and stuff just to expand your fleet, uh, just so you can bid on a few uh, jobs in Saskatchewan. Having to pay for new plates, vehicle registration and more will affect the hiring of crew members, as well as the number of projects that include government buildings and infrastructure. Maybe it's, it's jobs that we can't bid on or, or that we step back from if uh, the costs are too high to uh, get new plates registered or new vehicles registered in Saskatchewan. A co-owner of Cooper Concrete Lloyd Minster, Winter was surprised by the news. Being a, a business owner on the border, we've done work on both provinces and um, I think it works good. We have a good fluid balance of working bi-provincially. Winter says at this point there are no plans to meet as an association while the two provinces negotiate, a process he hopes will include a visit to the border city. Sit down as, as uh, grown men and, and hash this out because uh, right now they're not uh, playing very nice. Josh Ryan, New Cap News. Another change is coming to the workplace in the new year that affects non-family members on the Alberta farm. In this week's agriculture report, Gerard Lampau gets the legal perspective. The legislation has now mandated uh, WCB coverage for non-family members and occupation health and safety legislation is also applicable to non-family members. Pavlik specializes in labor and employment law, so essentially that covers anything that can happen on the job. His comments refer to the implementation of the Fair and Family Friendly Workplace Act, which takes effect on January 1st. It changes uh, which provisions of the former Employment Standards Code are applicable to agricultural workers. Pavlik says it changes which provisions of the former Employment Standards Code were applicable to Alberta agriculture workers. He speaks about what he sees as the biggest change. Farm employees are going to be entitled to vacation and holiday pay. Uh, farm employees will be entitled to minimum wage. And that's something that uh, didn't exist in the previous legislation. The new law applies only to non-family members. It allows employees to be eligible for leave in 90 days rather than one year. There are changes to compassionate care, maternity parental leave, rest periods, deductions, overtime, minimum wage, rules for termination, and youth employment. Family member is specifically defined in the legislation. Uh, it also doesn't cover volunteers. The legislation doesn't cover volunteers. So if your neighbor comes over and gives you a hand, they're not, they're not going to need to be covered by WCB. They wouldn't be subject to OHS. They wouldn't be subject to the minimum wage standards. Alberta Labour is running webinars, which anyone can sign up for by visiting the ministry's website. Pavlik says it's important for people to get informed. What they should do really, though, is go to the website, uh, the government website on, on the amendments to the legislation, uh, and getting, getting connected with CASA, the organization here, especially on the safety side, that deals with the occupation, health and safety, and the WCB component would be something people would be well advised to do. Gerard Lampau, Newcap News. back folks now we are in our fourth day of 12 strays of Christmas and in case you haven't uh, been following us each day we feature a couple of strays from the SPCA and I'm joined of course with the director uh, John Punchon now today we have this guy is quite um, <laughs> athletic he uh, yes. almost tried to jump out of my hands just a moment ago <laughs> yeah and, and surprisingly he's been quite quiet um, he's quite the chatterbox usually and, and his name's uh, Napoleon hmm. and uh, he's uh, been with us uh, not overly long um, close to a month now but um, he's definitely uh, very talkative and uh, loves to tell his stories about his day to pretty much anyone that'll listen um, but uh, definitely as you can see um, absolutely adores the, the attention and, and that might be why he's not as vocal is because he's getting some of that extra uh, cuddles and attention right now so he's a pretty happy cat <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and my friend here is uh, spider so spider is a little bit younger um, she's about uh, four and a half months old a little bit more timid um, still a very nice girl but um, getting uh, used to to people a little bit more so uh, 
she's uh, not as eager to go exploring <laughs> as uh, as Napoleon mm -hmm. there, but um. and is four and oh hello, <laughs> um, is uh, four and a half months old. Is that too young to be adopted out or? Oh no no, um, we actually spay as early, spay and neuter as early as two months. So um, actually, she's got her little recent surgery uh, belly there where they shaved uh, right. for her to be spayed. So so these two are ready to go. They're ready to go. Yep. So they are uh, looking to uh, hopefully get get their homes for mm -hmm. uh, for Christmas. Um, but uh, certainly again, you know, if, if people are uh, not able to adopt or maybe have uh, cats or dogs themselves, um, but would like to uh, help these guys find homes for Christmas, then uh, again, you can sponsor adoptions as well. Mm -hmm. And how does that work? How does a person sponsor an adoption? Sure, so they can uh, visit our website, lloydminsterspca.com, and we have a section under our donation specifically um, for sponsoring adoption. And somebody can uh, choose to sponsor a cat, kitten, um, dog, whatever we have uh, currently available for adoption. And uh, they can uh, just uh, click the donation button on the one they'd like to, to sponsor, and uh, we um, sometimes they'll choose the one that's been there the longest or if there's a specific one they're interested in uh, they can donate that way as well um, or they can also uh, just visit the shelter and, and sometimes uh, if they're sponsoring adoptions people like to, to do that um, because uh, they like to come in and uh, see which cats maybe they're interested in, mm -hmm. in uh, sponsoring. And so, man, this guy is just <laughs> melting in my lap yeah. here. He's, he's not going to last long in the <laughs> shelter, is he? No, no, he's wow. definitely a sweet guy. Yeah. Um, so tell us about uh, what you guys have going on next week, actually, where we'll mm -hmm. have... Oh, he's... Oh, he's, <laughs> he's decided to hide there. Uh, well, we actually have our jail and bail. Um, so Michaela is going to be uh, uh, here and in our jail and bail, and she'll be in from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, in one of the kennels, uh, spending time with the pets and uh, raising some money for the SPCA. It's one of our more popular uh, fundraisers uh, near the end of the year, and it's just great to around Christmas time because mm -hmm. a lot of our regular donors will come in for a visit and, and say hi to uh, some of the local uh, <laughs> celebrities and, and business owners. And um, yeah, it's just a great, uh, great event all around uh, for everyone. So um, and yeah. And how are you guys doing for donations at this time of year? Uh, well, this time of year is actually a, a really a good time of year. A lot of people donate. Um, we've seen an increase with our sponsored adoptions again. and. Uh, um, just uh, with it being the giving season, uh, a lot of people think about uh, the, the strays that maybe don't have homes this Christmas time and, uh, you know, um, they're always uh, looking to, to give uh, this time of year and we appreciate it and it's always so wonderful to see uh, so many people thinking about the SPCA and the animals in our care. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. For sure. Well, if you would like to <laughs> adopt these, like, look at this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you would like to adopt or sponsor an adoption for Napoleon or Spider, you can call, call the SPCA or stop by, and all that information is, of course, on your screen right there. And hopefully we can find some good homes for these uh, friendly cats here. Yeah, no, absolutely. That'd be wonderful. And uh, certainly if you haven't come down and seen uh, what we have available, we encourage people to do that. All right, thanks for coming in, John. No, thank you. This is New Cap Sports. Well, this week, Kara Lyons made her way down to Vermilion to meet up with one of the members of the women's rowing team for this week's Athlete of the Week. This year, the Lakeland women's rowing team was able to bring home a Western Canadian Championship while competing against university-level teams like the University of Victoria and the University of Calgary. A key piece to the wrestlers' success was Jaslyn Hall, which makes her this week's Athlete of the Week. Jaslyn competed in not only her championship race, but two other races on the day as well, totaling 5,000 meters. With impressive power and technique, she was able to fill in for the men's team after her competition was over. After a good warm-up, Jazz then took me through a workout, teaching me proper technique and giving me a glimpse into her routine. Boom. And then you come up. Boom. Woo, 10 up. meters. Two more slot strides. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Woo. Woo. We did it. Good job. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm going to be sore. 
So although Jazz's season on the water has come to an end, they are training for the indoor championships in March, which will take place in Black Falls. So good luck with that. And uh, thanks so much for having me out. I got to learn a lot about something I really didn't know about. So good luck with the rest of your season. And thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I got a sweat on and everything. It was great. Great. Alberta Sport Connection has been involved in international sport exchange programs. It sends Alberta athletes to foreign countries, giving them the opportunity to compete in a sport they love and excel in, while providing a cultural experience that just can't be acquired in Western Canada. Lance Phillips brings us the story of one lucky Vermilion teen who, beginning today, beginning Friday rather, is being given the chance of a lifetime. Few athletes can say they've competed in their sport in a different country. Typically those opportunities are reserved for Olympians, but 10 Alberta youth are being given the chance of a lifetime to cross-country ski in Gangwon Province, South Korea. One of those athletes is 16-year-old Vermilion resident Sam Ree. I just heard that there was going to be a, uh, an exchange with Alberta and our sister province, Gangwon Province in South Korea. And in the summer, maybe about May or June, I, uh, I decided I was going to fill an application. The application consisted of a resume complete with numerous newspaper articles, finishing with a written essay immediately following an in-person interview. It wasn't long after the process that Sam received the call he'd been waiting for, acceptance into the sport exchange. It's going to be a really good experience and there's not just one thing that you can say you're excited for. Like we'll be doing races and a bunch of other cultural stuff like we'll be able to go see old South Korean like temples and stuff. Obviously there's immense pride uh, when your son achieves something as significant as this, and, and this may be the biggest thing he ever does in his cross-country skiing career. Um, so, I mean, I'm very proud of that. The cultural portion of the trip involves a stay at a South Korean family's home and experiencing Korean way of life. But that's second on Ree's list of aspects of the trip he's most excited for. I think the races are going to be really fun. I'm going to be racing against, I think, one or two of the other kids from Alberta, who are else who's going to be there, but also these whole other group of South Koreans who I've never really seen before and I don't know what to expect. We're quite sheltered here in Western Canada. Small community that we live in, uh, you know, we don't see a lot of diversity and I think that, that, that hopefully he can, one, see that, you know, his work has paid off, but secondly, he gets exposure to a completely different culture. I'm just hoping that I can learn about how someone's life is like who's living in South Korea, who's my age. Within the Gangwon province lies Pyeongchang, the home of the 2018 Winter Olympics, meaning the Vermilion skier will get a chance, before most Olympians do, to compete on the Olympic cross-country ski course. It's going to create, I mean, a, a strong resume for sure for him, uh, but also I think a desire to pursue some of those dreams. I still have a long way to go in my ski career, and I think if I get to see this huge uh, sort of opportunity of like the Olympics and all that stuff. I'm, I'm definitely not expecting anything, but it would be really cool to be able to pursue that. Lance Phillips, Newcap Sports.